Excel is a perfect tool to allocate resources for your project. It will find the best solution for you automatically when you know what to do. Uh, first you need some information based on previous data or whatever. What does it cost to hire an employee? To fire one? What is the hourly rate? What is the overtime rate? Maximum hours, etc. I assigned in column B the name for that value. So I can use that in a in my calculations, in my formulas. So how, how do you give them the right name? You just select both and you are going to assign B1 to C1 as a name. Formulas and then you see here the define name section and we are going to create from a selection and it will say the left column has the names that we will use for that one. I'm, I'm cancelling it because I did that already. So where can you find those names now? You go to formulas, name manager and you will see there those names assigned to specific cells with specific values at this time. As you can see already here, I calculated that here very basically, that paying a new employee the first month is a 3700 and to pay for an old employee with overtime a maximum of 36 hours per month would be 4100. So it's probably in general better to hire a new employee than to give overtime pay to someone. But we will find out. So the next step is that you are going to make a matrix in which you are going to calculate what your best solution is. How many resources do you need? Let's say you do that for January through June. You put in this column how many employees you start with. Let's say we have five. And we are going to find out in January do we have to hire more or fewer people. How many employees do we have? Which one was hired on the first of the month? How many were fired on the first of the month? How many overtime employees do we have? Production and cost. The matrix is very simple. Here you just put what your product demand is going to be forecasted. And then in the next row you calculate how many employees do you have in this month and the following month which is basically the previous cell plus the ones you hired minus the ones you fired. And you copy that formula to the right. So right now it's all five employees of course. Then in these three rows we just put zeros. I, I did everything with one decimal to show you where the problem could be if we are going to do an optimization. Then how many products do we have? That is calculated now by using the names that we put in cell C1, C2, etc. That's the product per hour times C11, which is the number of employees, times how many hours per month do they work. Then we add to that the number of overtime employees, times C14, times the maximum overtime hours they are allowed to. And we copy that formula to the right. Then here we calculate what how much costs do we have in January, February, March. That formula is very intuitive, I would say. That is the number of employees times the hours that they work each month times the rate per hour plus the number of overtime employees times the maximum overtime times the rate for overtime plus how many hires do we have? C12 is the hired cell times the hiring cost per employee plus the firing cost. That is all calculated in the cost and we copy that formula to the right. And then we calculate the total, which is basically the sum of C6 through H16. You will realize that this is not the real situation yet. We want to make this as low as possible by finding out how many employees do we have to hire, to fire, or how many employees do we have to assign overtime to. 
that is done with a tool that Excel has inbuilt but that may not be activated. It is Data Solver. If you don't have Solver there, then you haven't activated it yet. So you go to File, Options, and you go to the Add-in section, and then you manage Excel add-ins and you go there and you get a list of all the ones we have. So I have already activated the solver add-in and I did already before analysis tool pack. Once you have that done, then in data you should have solver available. When you click on it, solver is going to ask you first what is your objective. That has to be a formula cell. In this case B18 and we are going to set that to a minimum. We want to optimize the situation that it is going to cost us as least money as possible. We are going to change variable cells. They have to have a value in it which is C2 through H13. That's where all the zeros are. But we have a few constraints. The first constraint is this one. You, if you don't have any yet, you just click on add. I'm just going to show you what it looks like. I'm going to go to the change button. I said the range C12 to H14, that is where the zeros are, has to be greater than or equal to zero. And then you add another one. I did that already, so here is the other one. That says that our production results should be higher than the demand of products. So again, that is very clear. You select the range, then you say what do you want there, etc. Then you probably have to do one more thing, and that is the options section. I used, under all methods, use automatic scaling. Uh, my precision is this. If you want a finer precision, it could take longer before it reaches a result. And I ignore integer constraints if you had any of those. So now when I click on solve, it's going to tell me that this is the situation each month. So in January I need 10.4 employees. I know that sounds a little weird, you can't have half employees. But for now, that is the easiest solution I got, and as you notice, we have no overtime employees, because they are usually more costly. So this is what we got every month. That is the optimal situation for our demands. $213,000 costs in six months. I'm, I'm going to cancel it. You, you probably say, I don't want half employees. So what should you have done in order to avoid that? You go back to your solver and you add a new constraint. Add. We want all these values, not the previous one, for that is a formula, all to be integers. But, remember, in options we put ignore integer constraints. So, if you click that off and we are going to run, I prepare you, it is going to take a long time, hours probably, because it's, it has to run many trials, many trials, and it keeps going and going until it finds a solution. So I'm not going to do that. So, when I solve, I get only the results that we had seen with decimals. To avoid that again, you may want that in real life, but it's going to cost you time to calculate it. I'd like you experiment with different settings to see whether you ever could get overtime employees or not.